could uh, please, uh, the participants, take your seats that we can continue with uh, the conference. Thank you. apologize for calling, but I think that we are a bit late, and I think that we should start with the, the new section, the new session of, of our conference. My name is Adolfo Catani. I'm the Secretary General of the European Disability Forum, and I would like to thank the organizers for uh, inviting EDF to moderate uh, this uh, session focuses on a key priority area for the disability movement, <coughs> the role of DPOs in uh, inclusive development uh, projects from the perspective of empowerment and participation. Before giving the floor to the distinguished uh, speakers of the session, I would uh, like to say, it should take only four minutes, a few words about EDF. EDF is an independent NGO that represents the interest of 80 million Europeans with disabilities. It is a unique platform which brings together representative organizations of, of persons with disabilities from across Europe. It is run by persons with disabilities democratically elected. It is an outstanding important moment for the conference we are holding today. In September, the new international development framework was adopted, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. It is in dramatic contrast with the, the Millennium Development Goals. This new framework has the ambition to leave no one behind. And the agenda for sustainable development includes 11 explicit references to persons with disabilities under the sections of human rights, vulnerable groups, education, employment, reducing inequality, inclusive cities, means of implementation, and data collection. EDF is a member of IDA and it has work of the International Disability Alliance and has uh, collaborated with all stakeholders, both at national and UN level. We collaborated close also with the International Disability and Development Consortium in our advocacy towards the EU. We need an inclusive, accessible international cooperation where DPOs are fully involved. Support to and strengthening of the disability movement is crucial. The UNCRPD committee, in its concluding observations on the EU report <coughs> on the implementation of the UNCRPD, after praising the EU for the role it has played uh, in promoting the inclusive uh, post-2015 agenda, recommended under Article 32 that the European Union adopt a harmonized policy on disability inclusive development and establish a systematic approach to mainstream the rights of persons with disabilities in all European Union international cooperation policies and programs to appoint, this is very important, focal points in related institutions and take the lead in the implementation of disability inclusive sustainable development goals. The EU were also called on the European, <coughs> were also called, <coughs> I'm sorry, excuse me, I have lost my computer, it is a bit old. Anyway, the, uh, the EU were also called uh, to continue developing the uh, activity in the field of uh, inclusive uh, cooperation because it is important that 
online with uh, Article 4.3 of the CRPD. The organization of persons with disabilities are fully included in all processes of development. This implies that in all development initiatives from the EU either at the EU level or in EU delegation, DPOs should be included in a structured dialogue. So let's now come to our session. I'm sorry, I have Now, I apologize for this, but there has been a problem. Now, the first uh, speaker in uh, our session is Mrs. Francesca Ottali. She is a member of uh, the RADS. She is uh, working at AIFO, which is the Associazione Italiana Amici di Raul Polero, a grassroots organization covering uh, the whole of Italy and at international level. The NGO is also active in two main areas, fighting against leprosy, integrated in primary health care services, and community-based uh, rehabilitation programs open to all groups of persons with disabilities, but in particular with those affected by leprosy and uh, the intellectual problems. Since uh, 2008, she is director of the Department for a project in foreign countries, and she is also an expert member of the Development Cooperation Group of the National Observatory on the Status of Persons with Disabilities. Her presentation uh, speaks about building empowerment through community-based rehabilitation. Please, uh, Madame, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, for me, uh, first of all, as a privilege, uh, as, a, as IFO, uh, as a member of IFO, uh, representative of IFO, and the representative of the, the Italian Network for Disability and Development, to, to talk uh, in this session that is promoting and em the empowerment of. Uh, DPOs, uh, uh, because we, uh, we, we are, um, how do you say, uh, implementing the motto of DPIs uh, since uh, already uh, more than 20 years. Uh, there is uh, nothing about us uh, without us. Uh, and uh, we are, uh, let's say, supporting each other. Uh, and the Italian network is uh, exactly the expression uh, of the of this um, of this uh, uh, willing. Okay, my presentation is uh, on a community-based uh, inclusive development, uh, promoting the right and fighting stigma. Uh, we are uh, focusing on uh, on three international tools that uh, I will not go uh, in depth on this uh, because uh, I guess that you all in this hall uh, know about uh, this. But uh, it's important to uh, mention a little bit the history of this. The, the, the UN Convention is the first, okay. Uh, the second is uh, Transforming the World, the agenda, uh, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And the third uh, is uh, the focus of my presentation, the main focus is community-based inclusive development or community-based uh, rehabilitation. Um, because uh, we are uh, focusing on the, on the paradigm shift 
the global approach, uh, that means uh, from the medical approach, uh, social and human rights. This is our goal. It doesn't mean that uh, we are there, uh, but this is uh, our objective in all of what we are planning and uh, implementing in, in the field, uh, both in Italy, uh, as this project, uh, as you, this event is, uh, is uh, focusing, but also in the, in the field, in outside, in foreign countries. Um, okay, UN Convention, uh, the main issue is this focus and the definition of the, of the person with disability. Uh, that uh, is the innovation of the, uh, and uh, we are following this and trying to implement this uh, Article 17 and Article 32 that is our. Transforming our, our world, uh, uh, the agenda of sustainable development. Uh, um, I would like just to mention uh, uh, the proudness uh, because uh, the, the um, the, the, the first uh, uh, Millennium Development Goals uh, uh, didn't have any, any disability uh, objective inside. And, uh, okay, they had uh, afterwards. That means after, uh, we know, no? we, we, we fight for this uh, and uh, we obtain a document integrating the Millennium Development Goals. This, in this case, uh, uh, the uh, collaboration with uh, among the, the different DPOs and, uh, and the institution, uh, DPOs, uh, NGOs, uh, net international network uh, uh, succeed uh, in having the 2013 uh, and 30 agenda. And uh, also that means uh, the implementation, the, the collaboration among the International Disability Alliance, uh, ADF, uh, and uh, International Disability and Development Consortium. This is very important because, uh, and I, the proudness uh, that I mentioned before, is that uh, uh, IFO is a funding member, as a CDM, is a funding member of the International Disability and Development uh, Consortium. So uh, it's uh, uh, the developing and the strengthening that uh, we, we, we have now uh, at the, and the good collaboration with the DP, international DPOs is uh, something that is very good. Um, so now, when we talk about community-based rehabilitation, uh, now before, uh, maybe you, you, some of you, uh, you were confused because we are not, we are talking both, you know? Uh, community-based uh, rehabilitation, so CDI, and community-based inclusive development. Actually, at this moment, uh, that since a uh, few years, uh, we are focusing more and more on community-based inclusive development because uh, rehabilitation is something, a word that is, uh, is not always uh, easily understandable and is uh, for, when we, wo we want to work with DPOs uh, and uh, rehabilitation is always a uh, um, um, uh, uh, kept as, uh, as a health the rehabilitation. So, it's, uh, uh, so we, we, we would like to move uh, forward on this. Uh, so rehabilitation in this case is not this, uh, uh, but it's inclusive development. When we talk about community-based inclusive development, uh, we talk about uh, uh, two levels. So promotes uh, human development in the community at community level and uh, promote uh, the and uh, um, enhance uh, and maximize uh, uh, the, the person, the abilities of the person and the family. So the two levels are always uh, uh, the, the two main uh, uh, focus for this, uh, for this uh, approach. You may know the CDI matrix. I just would like to, to, uh, to present to you because it's an important uh, step forward that uh, we, we have done. This is CDI matrix you will find in the WHO, WHO 
uh, website in different languages, uh, also in Arabic, uh, French, uh, Russian, uh, Spanish, Portuguese, etc. And the focus is that we, uh, when we develop this, uh, and it has been, uh, uh, I've been uh, participating in the core group uh, in the North authors and uh, on uh, developing the manual, the CDR guidelines, uh, where you find this, uh, that has been published in 2010. Uh, we focus on uh, uh, fi the five uh, main uh, um, pillars or of the human beings, that is health, education, livelihood, uh, um, social and environment. When we talk about CBID, community-based inclusive development, keep in mind that we are talking on human beings and all the uh, needs of the human beings. Um, I just, uh, uh, these are some pictures of uh, some projects that we have uh, in Mongolia. Uh, actually, in Mongolia, we have a program uh, since uh, uh, tw more than 20 years. Um, it's just to have some example of uh, uh, even in some diff very difficult and uh, particular, I mean, specific um, uh, context, uh, geographical context like Mongolia, where we are, there are more, most of the population, almost half of the population is still nomadic. Uh, we are implementing uh, this, uh, this uh, the, actually the government is uh, implementing this because in, since 2011, the government of Mongolia and the Ministry of Health of Mongolia declare that community-based inclusive development is uh, one of the um, one of the primary healthcare projects. Please, uh, you just conclude. Yeah. Okay. So, just last picture. Uh, another two examples. Uh, of the 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 these in this picture you can f you see that the, the mother or parents are together with the children. Um, uh, with their children. Uh, this is very important because uh, uh, to find a, a place to be together and to find out that you are not alone, uh, this is the first step for a mother or a father or parents uh, to start uh, their own uh, inclusion process of empowerment. Another thing I would like to to mention uh, when we were this uh, we, the picture that you uh, you can see uh, is uh, is in Mongolia always but I mentioned another project that um, we were uh, collaborating together with PPI um, where Gian Piero Grifo came and uh, started to um, uh, collaborate with the DPO, local DPOs uh, and uh, focusing on the uh, life story uh, of the person with disability. So these are all uh, uh, examples. I go st it's straight to the conclusion. Um, to that to bring to a paradigm shift where empowerment is in the middle. Because when we talk about uh, people and quality of life uh, and quality of your life, we will we are always talking about being, being somebody, belonging to somebody, and becoming somebody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for this interesting uh, and informative uh, presentation. Our next uh, speaker is Mr. Vincenzo Falabella. Uh, the, he, will talk, he will speak about uh, DPO's empowerment within the DPO's uh, federation. Mr. Falabella is uh, president since 2014 of the Italian Federation of the Overcoming of, uh, of Disabilities of Handicap, DISH, member of the Technical Scientific Committee of the National Observatory on the Status of uh, Persons with Disabilities. He is also a member of the Disability 
the Italian Disability Forum uh, board, and uh, he is one of the most active uh, persons in the field of disability in uh, our country. Vincenzo, you have the floor. And uh, 10, uh, maximum 12 minutes. Bene. Buongiorno a tutti. Ben arrivati in Italia. Buongiorno, Presidente Cattani. DPO Empowerment. La Convenzione ONU sui diritti delle persone con disabilità è la dimostrazione tangibile di come può essere considerato oggi il pieno concetto di empowerment e la partecipazione piena delle persone con disabilità. Noi, come Federazione Italiana per il Superamento dell'Handicap, come Rete Italiana della Disabilità, abbiamo iniziato a praticare questo processo innova innovatorio che ha visto sia a livello italiano la partecipazione delle organizzazioni che si occupano di disabilità, organizzarsi in collaborazione, in un confronto politico a livello italiano e a livello internazionale. Crediamo molto nella cooperazione internazionale. Abbiamo riposto molte delle nostre attenzioni, molte aspettative e vorremmo che oggi, con questa giornata, che questa giornata sia l'inizio di un percorso favorevole che abbia come unico scopo quello di garantire la piena inclusione a livello internazionale delle persone con disabilità, tutte. Inclusione. Nell'intervento che mi ha preceduto si è visto come il cambio di paradigma da un aspetto prettamente, medi prettamente medico ad un aspetto più sociale, più inclusivo. Quell'inclusione che l'intero movimento delle persone con disabilità in Italia ha più volte paventato, ha più volte affrontato ed è riuscita a portare in termini anche di concretezza degli interventi normativi che sono volti nella direzione del dettato internazionale della Convenzione dei nostri diritti delle persone con disabilità. Noi oggi in Italia abbiamo costruito un percorso che va ben oltre i confini nazionali perché crediamo che il confronto internazionale, questa esperienza internazionale possa sicuramente migliorare quelli che sono anche i dettati internazionali ma soprattutto, ma soprattutto in, a cascata quelli che sono gli interventi volti nel miglioramento della qualità di vita delle persone con disabilità e questo non può prescindere da un dato fondamentale, la piena partecipazione, l'empowerment e delle organizzazioni che si occupano delle persone con disabilità e delle organizzazioni non governative. Noi abbiamo voluto iniziare un percorso di condivisione, la RIZ ne è la dimostrazione concreta, che le esperienze di coloro, le, di coloro i quali oggi hanno acquisito nel corso degli anni quelle esperienze che portano l'intero movimento associativo, ma le persone stesse ad avere quella consapevolezza di tutela di quei diritti, di quei diritti umani che sono ripetute più volte all'interno di un dettato internazionale, possiamo insieme a coloro i quali nella loro indole è concreta la possibilità di fare cooperazione internazionale, bene, entrare in sinergia, in sintonia per cercare di intervenire, intervenire in maniera significativa su quelle che sono le politiche e nazionali e estere di ogni paese. Abbiamo costruito un percorso di condivisione, un percorso di condivisione di politiche attive, sia sulla disabilità ma anche in maniera molto più ampia di inclusione, quell'inclusione che tanto è stata paventata, che sempre viene paventata e che purtroppo oggi ancora una volta in alcune circostanze purtroppo viene a trovarsi ostaggio di quelli che sono gli iter normativi dei vari, delle vari, dei vari interventi politici dei, dei, nostri, dei nostri paesi. Abbiamo un lungo lavoro che ci ha visto coinvolti sia nella stesura di un piano di azione biennale nel nostro Paese che, una, che ha dato, ha riservato un'attenzione particolare a quella che è la tematica della cooperazione internazionale. Noi oggi qui stiamo 
portando a confronto quello che è stato un percorso condiviso, l'auspicio, l'augurio che mi sento di rivolgere a tutti i presenti è che questo percorso possa avere una continuità, quella continuità di condivisione, quella con, uh, continuità di contraddittorio per migliorare le politiche e le scelte di ogni singolo paese. Il tutto non può prescindere da un dato fondamentale che è stato anche lo slogan coniato in occasione della stesura del dettato internazionale della Convenzione ONU sui diritti delle persone con disabilità, il nulla su di noi senza di noi, che paradossalmente non vuole rappresentare soltanto uno slogan rivendicativo, ma vuole invece rappresentare una buona prassi, un'azione utile che sia di eh, confronto con le istituzioni, ma soprattutto che sia di confronto per un miglioramento di quelle che sono le politiche attive rivolte alle persone con disabilità. Bene la cooperazione internazionale, purché la stessa avvenga all'interno della cornice del dettato internazionale della Convenzione ONU sui diritti delle persone con disabilità. Oggi, purtroppo, ancora oggi, nonostante tutto, noi continuiamo a percepire e a notare con, con estrema eh, malessere una, una violazione dei diritti umani quando parliamo di persone con disabilità. Lo sforzo che va fatto è cambiare direzione, cambiare paradigma e far sì che queste persone continuino ad essere, come lo sono sempre state ma poco considerate, cittadini attivi nel nostro Paese. Piano di azione biennale. Osservatorio nazionale sulla condizione delle persone con disabilità, questo è il lavoro che stiamo facendo all'interno del nostro Paese, un lavoro che non vuole soltanto rappresentare, o non vuole rapportarsi soltanto all'interno dei confini nazionali, ma vuole andare ben oltre, vuole superare i confini della, dei, dei propri Stati e vuole comunque confrontarsi a livello internazionale per far sì che ci sia una politica, che ci siano politiche di intervento mirate a migliorare la qualità di vita delle persone con disabilità non soltanto in Italia ma in tutto il resto del mondo. E questa è una eh, prerogativa che il nostro movimento si è dato a livello nazionale, che lo si, lo si sta dando a livello europeo con le organizzazioni europee, con le organizzazioni internazionali e credo che sia questa la strada condivisa per un futuro migliore per tutti i cittadini, anche e soprattutto per le persone con disabilità. Grazie. Thank you. Thank you very much also for keeping within uh, the speaking time which is a great advantage. Now the next speaker is Mr. Kalle Könkala from uh, Abilis Foundation in Finland. Kalle is uh, one of those disability activists who have uh, and are still writing uh, the story of the disability movement in, uh, within its country and also in the world at a world level. Former member of the parliament of Finland, president of DPI in the past and expert in advocacy work, he is the founder of Abilis Foundation, uh, development aid for persons with disabilities is its uh, main activity. He is the executive director of another organization which is called the Threshold Association in, uh, in uh, Finland. He is an expert on accessibility in the bright and the broad sense and he has organized many also demonstrations in order to promote uh, the respect of human rights of persons with disabilities. So I think that it is an honor and a pleasure to have Kalle with us today. Kalle, you have the floor, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm very happy to be in Rome, and I'm, I'm also happy that very few European level meetings have so many disabled people present. Normally, when I'm in, in a meeting to speak about disability, there are only me or some other person, and, and all the others have, have no disability. I don't, I like non disabled people, that's not the problem. But, but to speak without disabled people uh, presence is not, not right. So this is a, a 
very good development here, here in Rome, and I will remember this to end of my life. But, uh, but I want to first, no, first I had to make a comment about the data, data collection. That makes me nervous because I have heard this 30, 30 years, and every time somebody says we need data collection, it means that people don't do anything because they think that they don't know enough. But I can guarantee there are enough disabled people. You need not to count on them. There are, and and if, you, if you look how much money is used, Finland is using on disability about 10 million. We know that there are more disabled people than we can help with the 10 million euros. And I'm sure that with the same with the other countries. But about a few words about Dublin's foundation is that Dublin is, is giving micro grants uh, like Katarina explained and we are only giving the money to the grassroots organizations which are run by disabled people. And, and we have also made a decision a long time ago that every project should be run with the disabled coordinator. And that's how we have helped a disabled individual to have experience with international cooperation and development activities. And like, uh, if I remember right, we have this year, uh, we are financing this year 350 projects. It means that 350 disabled people get experience to run a project. And that is, that is something, uh, some results, which is, uh, if, if a person learns something, uh, he or she remember that for the rest of his or her life. And, and give, it gives also working opportunities uh, for, for future. The other issue Katarina uh, from Finland mentioned was uh, uh, global disability diplomacy on human rights. That's uh, a three years initiative we, we started it three years ago. And the idea is, here is a uh, few levels. One, one level is that we are training uh, young disabled people to be more professional on international cooperation. And that's because we need disabled people to do this work. And, and, and we have now, I think in the end of the year, we can publish a, a group of 10 people who have been trained to do development work and international work. And they have also all kind of uh, experience. And when the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Finland asks some advice, advice, we are ready to give the advice not only by me and, and some other, but, but we have a group of people who can, who can help the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Finland to do better work. The, the best thing in my life is to help the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Finland. Some people don't like it, but some people like it. And, and uh, that's a problem in Finland, to be serious, is that, that we have been too much dependent on the nice or good people in the ministry. It's, individual level and the, the institutional memory is very short and we don't have a strong commitment from the whole organization. We have commitment from different individuals and as you know in the minister, I think it's in all ministries of foreign affairs, people are rotating. They are three years in their work and then they change. Okay, when we started uh, 20 years ago, now the first people we met, uh, they are now ambassadors. So, so there's a, but, but there are still too many people who, are, who don't have their commitment on this and, and the institution is not, has not been strong enough to, to support this uh, inclusive uh, development. We have in Finland some good, good things like uh, we have had possibility to do the development work, development work by EPOs because of the, the uh, nice system that, that the government governments have reserved a special fund for NGOs and DPOs to, to get support to their own development cooperation. And, and that has like uh, helped us to learn how to do this work. And, and we have more people who can do this than, than uh, 25 years ago. By the way, I just found out from my files, I was cleaning my, my, my papers and I found that I've First letter I wrote to the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Finland happened 33 years ago, and I, uh, I wrote a very nice letter that 
please, Minister for Less and can you include disabled people in the development cooperation? And, and then I met some people, and, and, and I was very happy in the beginning because they were so nice, but then I understood later that they were diplomatic people, and in fact, they said no. But it sounded like yes, because they, they can speak so nicely to stupid uh, young people like me at that time. I think then uh, the main issue I would say here is that, that disabled people themselves must be included, not only organizations of disabled people, uh, and not, uh, not only organizations for disabled people. And uh, that's a problem that we are facing also inside of the movement that we are sending non-disabled representatives to the meetings and, and, and participate because we think it's so complicated. And, and difficult. But my experience uh, since um, 87, uh, when I was first time in Zambia, is that, that when we are sending disabled people themselves to meet the disabled people in developing countries, that has a meaning. It has a meaning that people understand that they are not alone. Many disabled people think that they are alone in the world. An organization where nobody takes care about them because all organizations are fighting with the same same uh, attitudes and the same problems that they feel that they are not part of their own community. That's also in Europe we are fighting about the situation. We are, we are not belonging to the community, but it's even stronger in the developing countries where there, are, where there are much less resources and people are much more isolated because of the lack of the resources. So that is important that that also the European level and country level that we include disabled people themselves to these processes in planning, implementing, and monitoring processes. The, the second issue which I want to say here is that, that uh, the inclusion. So we have, we have succeeded quite well that we have many political statements about the participation and so on, but and we have money for uh, disability specific uh, projects and activities, but how to get disability on where the big money is? The big money is in the, is in the bilateral and multilateral cooperation, and, and we have not been very successful so far in Finland, and I don't think that uh, in many countries, I think that in many countries we have the same problem that those who are implementing the, the bilateral projects, they, they don't know about disability or they don't care. And, and, and they think that if we want to have disability in these big projects, it makes more harms than benefits. And, and uh, let's say about the example of Finland. Finland has been supporting many years the uh, education in Ethiopia, but still 96% of the disabled people in Ethiopia have no education. The results are not very good. In fact, they are very bad, uh, and, and Finland has financed schools with no ramps. Finland, have, Finland has not only government, but also the, some NGOs have financed schools which are not accessible. And, and that's, for me, it was ridiculous. And, and somehow we should get this in the area like, in the area like education, we should get that, the basic things uh, to work so that the that this we will are included in education from the beginning and not, not later. And it's ridiculous that like uh, some small organizations uh, are then financing ramps. First the government builds the school and then some NGO or DPO gives the ramp. You cannot say that it's very effective. Other area where Finland has been active has been uh, water and sanitation. And very few accessible latches have been built with this money. And, and, the, and the dwells and pumps are not accessible. So I can be very critical about this. this and, but maybe this, like this kind of process here helps that the attention is, is clear enough. A few slides about this. We need political view. That's missing about the multilateral and bilateral work. We don't have that uh, political will, will uh, enough. When we have political will, then we can make a policy. And when we have the policy, we have to start to implement the policy, and then we need the process. And this is, these are very simple organizational uh, general 
ideas. Is, uh, you don't need much invention of this. The only way is participation, that different people with different experience are uh, sitting together and starting to work together. And, 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 uh, and we need, we need a specialist who know education, who know water and sanitation, or you know, whatever we need to have them. We need to have people with disabilities to sit around on the table, and we need a dialogue. We need different kind of presence. Not so that there are different, different groups of commenting, but we need a working together. And dialogue means that we speak and we listen. Listening, okay, it's also my fault. I don't always, uh, I'm too tired of listening about the data collection. But, but uh, it's important to learn to listen and to, to, to make this uh, practical implementation, we need training. We have to train disabled people that they know how this um, international cooperation is working, who is making what decision, how the processes in doing the work uh, is going on. And, and we need trained disabled people to participate in this. And we need also also training in the, in the uh, recipient countries. I have, I have proposed to the Finnish government that we should have, like in Ethiopia, we have a lot of activities, that we need a, a local Ethiopian uh, panel with disabled people to look what Finland is doing now and to evaluate it, giving advice and, and, and looking how it could be done, done uh, better. I think this is um, the key issue, what I want to say here, that there's no solution at the moment how the process will go, but we need, uh, we need the pilot, uh, pilot attempts uh, to start sitting together, and uh, not only in Rome, but also in Helsinki. And, and we need this uh, uh, internationally, and we need also that uh, nationally, and also we need to do that in, in in like in Ethiopia or wherever we are, we are working. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the last, the next speaker on my uh, on my schedule is <coughs> Maria del Carmen Peral. I did not have the pleasure to meet her this morning, so. I do not see. I would like to ask if she is in the room. I hope. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, Maria del Carmen is uh, working at the uh, Fundación, Fundación Once para la Cooperación e Inclusión Social de Personas con Discapacidad. She is specialized in management of NGOs and uh, implementation management and uh, assessment of development cooperation projects. Since 2015, she is working in the technical office of FOAL, which is the ONTE Foundation for Solidarity with Blind People in Latin America. Uh, there will be the presentation of a video, and then uh, Maria del Carmen will uh, take the floor. Thank you. Composed of 21 countries and with a population of almost 600 million inhabitants, Latin America is still one of the poorest and most unequal continents on the planet. It is estimated there are approximately 5 million blind people in the region. FOAL ONTE Foundation for Solidarity with Latin America. In 1998, ONCE, the National Organization of Spanish Blind People, set up FOAL, an ambitious development cooperation project to promote equal opportunities and non-discrimination for blind people in the continent, particularly in the fields of inclusion in education, training, and employment, but also to boost consolidation in the Latin American blind movement. FOAL's work reaches each and every country in Latin America. Education, a solid start. 
One of FOAL's key goals is to secure education for all blind boys and girls in Latin America. To achieve this, FOAL is engaged in Braille book production and supplying classroom material in adaptive formats to suit the needs of each child and provides training and guidance to professionals and families alike in order to realize the basic right of every child to go to school. This is an arduous and difficult task, particularly when working in rural areas and with indigenous populations. But it's also an immensely gratifying one when some of them manage to reach university. Agora, a program with a future. 80% of all blind and severely low vision people in Latin America don't have a job and cannot access vocational training or job placement programs in their countries. Since having a job is a key factor in securing financial independence and enjoying full inclusion in the community, FOAL has been involved in employment from the very outset through its Agora program which focuses on delivering training and career guidance to blind people through the use of information technologies and targeted training courses to enable them to find employment. In addition, Agora creates jobs. Thanks to the program, a large number of blind people have set up their own businesses. While remaining sensitive to gender equality and the need to decentralize services from urban settings to rural areas. Thanks to Agora, we have secured jobs for 1,000 people annually in Latin America. Comprehensive Rehabilitation – Tools for a Full Life In partnership with the Latin American Union of the Blind, FOAL has developed a technical handbook on rehabilitation to guide professional practices in the field. The handbook, which was drawn up based on the differing experiences of many blind and severely visually impaired people, seeks to foster personal autonomy and independent living. We all have something to share and say. And blind people from Latin America do so through foal.es. There they can exchange experiences, moments and information on new projects and also provide mutual support to each other. All these achievements stem from just one source of solidarity, the ONCE Lottery. The lottery we've known every day for all our lives. The lottery that combines excitement with people's solidarity. Reaching Latin America through FOAL. Uno lo que busca es superarse para para así poder proyectarse al futuro, ¿no? Que luchar y siempre seguir adelante. Nosotros somos capaces de eso y de mucho más. Supporting Latin America. Thank you, thank you very much. So you have more or less uh, six uh, or maximum ten minutes time to speak. Ten minutes, okay. Thank you very much. And now that you know who we are, I want to tell you how we read the group and the key keys of San Otulwar Mok Satterful experience. Uh, I don't speak in French, uh, English, French, because my darling world deals with people from the Spanish speaker region. And sorry for, for it. Um, who do it? The world. Uh, all single headquarters are locally in Madrid. Well, that's, uh, that's not had any races in the countries we are working in. So contact with the ground are very outcome. Direct communication with associ association, federation, national unions of people with visual impairment through email, Skype, or phone calling. A mention in the video through a web, we, uh, web, we receive communication for people with visual disability and her family, but also from professional and even neighbors and friends 
who write to us looking for help or guidance. At present time, we have a group of Ponte professional voluntaries who can be contacted in case of technical careers. Well related with NIRS association or institution, or with our contact in the Ministry of Education, it is a consultation relies with education for one or our partners country. Faltry always altered the way to evaluation of focus the world and the problems involved. They allowed us to square commitments with later are transforming into agreement. Containing concreteion actions and operation plan with can be implemented. We, uh, when we had meeting with governments, we tried to be accompanied by leaders of, rep of representatives of people with visual disability for the country concerned. Our local partner coordinate the agencia San Foals coordinator or coordinator of education training and food placement project are request to be present with us at the meetings. So the contact is established and the work can begin and so as we live, as well as to follow up of commitment and action. Furthermore, we had the support of the Spanish Agency for International Development Co Cooperation, IFID, with three training centers as allow us to organize a forum of such as, such as training and job placement projects for people with disabilities, or education research center, an example experience like the seminar organization in Guatemala the role of ministerial educa educational resource centers and the relation with international cooperation and civil society. Organized by FOAL, the Spain Ministry of Education and the Organization of Iberoamerica State, with the subject that we are here today. The project is concerning the case points are by most suffering project. In our project, there is a list of civil so society organization helping us with management and implementation. Organization of people with visual impairment and disability show us the re rehabilitation center for blind adult pride in training as yours, placement project Agora Colombia, and the Franciscan Institute for the Blind in Krasnovi in the implement project was an adjective, uh, sorry, National Center of Educational Resource for Students with Visual Impairment in Honduras, Center Reading. A human rights organization, such as Global Childhood, with the project to embrace training of people with visual disability under environment in Paraguay. We are also fortunate to count of key strategic partners responsible for public policies at the structural chain, such as, as, such as government, the National Service for Learning, SENA in Colombia, the Education Secretariat in Honduras, at the Ministry of Education and Culture in Paraguay. And we management, pardon, and we managed to demonstrate it's less time with pile of projects how far it is possible to go in we obtain financing from some cooperation ag agency or with an alliance with some other developed NGO. As it has been the case for these three projects from the Madrid Autonomous Community and the Spanish Agency for International Development Cooperation, I think. We also go working in Agora Bolivia with Caritas and in Agora El Salvador with the Red Cross. Our most southerly projects share those four elements, civil society, government, cooperation agencies, and an international development NGO. Leading the project with experience in cooperation work and people with visual disability. We do not have the time to inform about our mission, but I hope that it has been sufficient. Our door will always be open to enable 
you to know us better and we invite you to sign your alliances. Thank you very much. It is well. example of good practice. Before we conclude, we will take some uh, minutes for questions, if, uh, any, if there are any. So please, if anybody wants to speak, the floor is open. No. Nobody wants to speak, so I would like simply to close this session. It has been very important, very informative. I think that we have had uh, examples of good practice. We have also had very clear definitions of uh, the most important principles uh, that lead the activity of uh, the um, organizations, of DPOs, of disabled people's organizations. I think uh, if we want to uh, say to do more or less what uh, the previous coordinator wanted, I would simply say for action, what we have to learn from this section is never be content with words, but go to facts. Thank you very much for listening.